Hello and welcome to another Spirit of Nature Art video tutorial, the final one in this altered book. So I want to do something a bit celebratory, a bit different, and I was totally inspired by this beautiful picture of a flamingo. So I went through my scraps box, all of the things that kind of get thrown aside in my making, uh, the bits of jelly plate printing like this one here, um, and I just went through and I picked out anything pink uh, any of those lovely, bright, gorgeous pinks that I thought would be fantastic for creating this beautiful flamingo. And um, the things that, that tissue paper, I want them to be thicker than that because these are going to be the feathers. So anything that's tissue paper, I'm ad adhering it to some spare book pages from that altered book. So I'm just using my matte medium gel uh, and just sticking those onto those book pages, just collaging. Uh, just so that I can get some uh, some interesting textures and patterns uh, and bring in that lovely gorgeous pink colour. I'm just using this stencil here, Tracy Scott one, and I am using that to create these beautiful, uh, these are, are petals I guess on this particular stencil, but for me these are going to be the feathers of the flamingo. So I'm tracing that through onto bits of those scrap uh, jelly plate or brayering pages. Um, and I'm also now, before I cut them out, I'm going in and adding a little bit more texture just with some stamping. So I'm using my Versafine Claire um, ink there, which of course is going to be permanent. Uh, and just stamping that on, I've got a couple of different, I've got a script stamp and also this lovely kind of sacred geometry stamp and I'm just stamping that over the pages so that when I cut them out, look at all these beautiful pink feathers that we now have to create our flamingo with. Lots of different texture, different patterns uh, and I want to, uh, to kind of bring those all together a little bit now just by edging them with that beautiful seedless preserves uh, distress oxide ink. So just using my ink dabber just to go round now and just edge all of those so that when they uh, are adhered to the page they're gonna stand out. And these are the ones where I stuck the tissue paper to the book pages and of course the other side is completely blank so I've just gone in and sprayed that with some more Distress ink um, I think that was picked raspberry um, and these ones here which are just the normal copy paper I am sticking them back to back and this is the prototype I created so you now you'll know why I was making all of those feathers so I created that little prototype just to see how this was going to pan out and now I'm turning my attention to the background. So I'm putting those feathers away for a little bit and I am just thinking about the background. And again, this is another Tracy Scott stencil. I'm really liking this one. And I'm just playing around on my jelly plate. Not quite sure what I'm kind of doing, but I'm thinking about how this kind of mirrored a little bit, the movement of the feathers in that flamingo. So I've just put down some kind of dark blue acrylic paint and I am just seeing how that's gonna line up on my page. So whilst that is drying, in which I'm using my paper here to flap around with, I want that to be dry so that when I put the next layer on, this paler blue, it's not going to mush up with the dark blue that's already on the page. So I'm just, I'm stamping this straight into the book page. So I've placed that jelly plate onto an acrylic block just to make it easier for me, A, to see where I'm putting it, and B, just to be able to really kind of like rub that page on. So as with all jelly prints, they are just gonna be what they are. You can't plan for exactly how they are going to come out. So some of it came out really well and other bits didn't. So I've just put a little bit more of that turquoise blue on just to see if I can pull some more of the pattern off that plate, which has just kind of lifted that a little bit. So still trying to take some more of that beautiful pattern of the jelly plate. That's the wonderful thing about the jelly plate. One particular um, piece that you do, you can get three or four, uh, sometimes even more prints from it. And for me, this isn't about getting lots of detail here. I just want that suggestion of 
texture and movement in the background. So I'm not fussed that it's not come out as a perfect print. Indeed, I didn't want it to come out as a perfect print. So here's how it's gonna start coming together. This is my prototype. Here's my kind of rough drawn out head of the flamingo. And we can see how I want to just now create these kind of semicircles on these pages here so that I can start to create that beautiful feather detail. So I'm just using my compass and I am making a small semicircle to start with and I'm just sticking that page down to the next page so that I've got two page thickness which means it's going to be a bit more sturdy. And now I just want to cut the rest of the page away so I'm just left with that little semicircle which is going to be the first one that I attach those feathers to. So just using my scissors, nothing too complicated here. And just cutting away the excess from the top and the bottom. And there's our first semicircle. And now I'm just measuring out for the size for the next one behind it. And again, gluing the two pages together so we get that extra thickness. And then cutting away the excess. Do you know, I don't normally do prototypes for my pages, but because I had an idea in my head of what I wanted to be able to do, I had to think about how am I going to make this work? How is this going to happen? So, uh, so I did spend a little bit of time just kind of trying to figure it out. And once I got to a little plan that I realized was going to work, then it was time to bring it to the actual book. And now for the final circle, just using my compass there to use the same measurements. And here, I think I stick three pages together just because the last few pages in that book are actually much thinner than the main pages in the book. So I just wanted to give it a little bit more sturdiness because this is gonna take, and particularly this uh, semicircle here is gonna take most of the weight from those feathers, petals, whatever you'd like to call them. you're not going to see too much of the semicircles because I'm going to be sticking all of those feathers to it but I don't want there to be kind of glaring white spaces if there's any gaps between them so I am going to add some color to them I'm just protecting the rest of my pages there and I'm going to do a distress ink smush so uh, actually that's oxide rather than ink and that's that same seedless preserves that I used on the petals so just smooshing it onto a little bit of kind of acetate a bit of packaging from some stamps adding a little bit of water to it and then literally just smooshing it on. <laughs> I like putting it on like that because you get that texture, you get that kind of slightly watercolour look and again completely unpredictable but it's great fun. So you can see I'm not being too precise here. <laughs> And now just going in with the ink dauber and using that same seedless preserve just to edge it. You can see how different the colours are. Same, same ink that I've used on the main bit and also uh, on the edging there. But when you use it in different ways, you get different colours. And again, I'm just wanting to get as much texture on here as possible. So I'm just using some stamps. I think these are art by Marlene stamps. I love this little kind of swirly one. Again, it just got me thinking about that kind of movement in the feathers of the flamingo. So just adding some extra detail on. And now it's time 
to start to add the feathers, which is really exciting. Uh, and I just start off by just auditioning things, just kind of putting them in place and seeing how this is gonna work. Even though I did my prototype, uh, I still wasn't kind of 100% sure. I never took the prototype from right the way to the, the, uh, the end point. So I just wanted to check how it was all gonna look before I started to commit by sticking them down. So I'm just using some uh, high tack glue uh, and just adding a, just a small amount to the bottom half of the petal. I'm starting to put them in place. Beauty of that high tack glue is you, you do get a, a short window of opportunity to wiggle things around, but it dries pretty quickly. So it means that you're not hanging around waiting for things to dry for too long. If you're impatient like me when you're doing your artwork, that's, <laughs> that's quite good. And now moving on to that inner middle semicircle there, just doing the same thing. Doing one at the top, one at the bottom, one in the middle, and then filling in the gaps. So actually all that preparation work making those petals, which actually did take quite a bit of time. I fast forwarded it and edited a lot out for you. Um, but that probably took the most amount of time. And actually now that's paid off because sticking it all together like this actually came together pretty quickly. And it was quite exciting because I could, I could really see that idea starting to, to come to life. So you can see how that's all starting to look now. I wanted to go back and make this even fuller because that flamingo just had so many feathers and it looked amazing. So I'm gonna go back now and add some more of those feathers onto the inside so it just adds even more volume. And just putting a few half petals in there just to make sure that that was didn't kind of just drop off when we got to the end of the page. And I love how it looks. I can't decide if it looks like a, like the flamingo or if it looks like a beautiful flower. Either way, it's beautiful and so much texture. amazing fluffy flamingo bum uh, it's time to move on to the actual flamingo so I, I literally just kind of sketched out to start with this idea of the flamingo head and how that was going to look uh, and I'm just now kind of using some more of those leftover book pages just to sort of try and collage it together a little bit see how that's going to fit on the page and how I'm going to kind of merge those two bits together. So again I, I kind of sort of had a bit of a plan I had these kind of bits of scrap jelly plate um, prints that I had um, to the side which I found in my stash that were the right colour uh, and so once I got that sketch right I just used that to cut out the body of my flamingo. detail there just to guide me for when I start to add more detail with the colouring. 
be so lovely starting with a, uh, a background already that's why I always keep all of my um, scrap jelly prints because it gives me backgrounds to work with and it's so much easier to create something when you've already got some kind of color and texture there so I'm just looking at how I can kind of pull these two pieces together I've used the same Tracy Scott stencil and stenciled out the teeny tiny little uh, petals to use as almost like a bit of a, um, a feather boa around the neck of my flamingo because do you know what she's pretty glamorous isn't she so again just auditioning it playing around with it seeing how it's gonna fit and do you know what there's always a lot of faffing in my uh, in my creations there's just trying things out I edit so much of it out for you but I wanted you to know I don't go in and just do this immediately I'm just figuring it out as I go along so you can see how this flamingo has started to come together from a bit of a sketch, some scrap bits of jelly print and uh, just trying to figure out how I can put it all together. So I've pulled out my Prismacolor pencils now because I just I really wanted that beak to be super vibrant. If I look back at the, the picture that originally inspired me, it was the beak that really kind of popped and stood out. And that's what I love about the Prismacolor pencils. You can get so much intensity in the color. So I've picked uh, three or four uh, gradients of color. So I think I've started off with um, like the black grape. So it actually looks black, but it's a really, really deep, dark purple. And then I move up through those colors to, um, I think maybe hot pink. So, and processed red, I think I use as well. I'll put the colors down below. Uh, and I've just added in as well some white highlights for me to work around and I'm just doing the usual blending process so starting off with the first layer really light circular motion um, and then going over the top of the colors you've already done with the lighter color and then the same with the lighter color the same with the lighter color and then each layer you go back again and you press a bit harder so that you can start to blend those colors together there are loads and loads. If you want some video tutorials on how to do colouring and blending uh, with your Prismacolor pencils, there are loads on YouTube. Um, I think my Zentangle teacher that taught me years ago, uh, Tracy Scott is another one who uses Prismacolor pencils fantastically, so definitely check out some of her tutorials. And I've just picked out, and again, looking back at that photograph of my flamingo, it had bright orange eyes. So I've picked out some orange colors. So again, always starting with a really dark one. So the dark was a brown, moving up through a dark orange into a light orange. And just doing the same technique as I did with the beak, just blending those colors together so that those eyes really pop out. And now seeing how my lovely flamingo looks in place, I've stuck her in and I have stuck those petals. I also cut out some heart shapes uh, to put around her neck as well. So, and edged her uh, with a, a little bit of uh, more Distress Ink. And I'm just trying to kind of connect the two together now. So where she is and where the background of that first page is. So I've put some more petals in coming behind her head um, and I'm using some of those more teeny tiny ones just to sit behind her again and just kind of playing around with where they fit and what looks right as I'm doing it. So I'm just trying to kind of soften that connection between her head and body and that background and where her beautiful big tail finishes. And I just keep playing around and fiddling with that until I'm happy with the overall balance. And now just adding a little bit more texture to that background. So I've got a script stamp here uh, and just use some matching oxide inks. So I think that was salvaged patina. Uh, and now just going in with the same and picking out that lovely pink. So seedless preserves and just adding that to the body of our lovely flamingo. And then of course we need a quote, we need a sentiment, and this Seth Apter stamp seemed absolutely perfect for this beautiful flamingo. Always be yourself. So 
So I've stamped that using the Seedless Preserve Distress Oxide and I'm just putting some clear embossing powder on it so that I keep that beautiful colour so it matches the rest of the page. Always put your lid on your embossing powder before you get the heat gun out, <laughs> that's my top tip. Um, and just heat setting that, look how that colour, it's just beautiful, stands out really nicely. And so I, again, just trying to bring those two colours together, so I'm edging the page with that Seedless Preserve. So that, that blue and that pink just sit together everywhere. And of course we need some splatters, so again, Distress Oxide, bit of water, paintbrush, splatter it on, very small ones, just that fine detail just to bring those two colours together and just highlighting now that quote using my white Signo Uniball pen, just going in and adding some white drop shadow just to make those words really pop out from the page because they need to, to stand out against that beautiful flamingo. So I hope you have enjoyed this final page in my altered book. If you want to flip, flip, oh dear, flip through, <laughs> you will find a separate video because this one's already quite long. Um, but thank you for joining me on this journey and I shall look forward to starting the next altered book. I will see you all soon. Thank you for joining me.